Hello friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Deepa Robbins from Designs by D and today I have another Christmas card to share with you. Now before I get started, I just want to take a quick second to say a big, big thank you to everybody who has been watching my videos and who have subscribed to my channel. All of you mean so much to me. I've been getting a lot of supportive and helpful comments from all of you and I just really just want to take this little 50 seconds or so to just say thank you so much. And I also want to give a quick shout out to AV. If you don't know her designs, I have her Instagram listed in the description below. And she is my inspiration for today's card because she makes a ton of easel cards and they're really unique and inspirational. I definitely recommend checking her out. Now let's move forward. I will be focusing on Pink Fresh Studio products. This is the Happy Holiday Circle Frame Stencil Stamp and Dies and this comes as a product suite. You don't have to get everything together. You can pick and choose what you want to get and also some of these sets come with foil plates so that's always a great deal especially with these products. So the first thing I'm going to do is stamp out that beautiful holly circle frame. I'm the type of person when it comes to Christmas cards I've always like I've always been amazed by hollies, just the way they grow and the way they look, they're just so beautiful. So I really like this circle frame. And if you wanted to, you could just get the stamp and actually color in these leaves. There's not too many of them and they're small enough that it won't take you too much time. So because I'm gonna be doing ink blending, it doesn't really matter what type of ink I used. I just used Versifying Claire Nocturne black ink. And now I'm lining up my first stencil and I'm gonna be using Altenew Persian Blue ink. So I wanted this card to be very winter felt instead of the Christmas red and green. So I've chose, chosen a couple nice deep blues to really stand out on the white background and through the acetate of this card. So at first I was actually stenciling this pretty lightly because I wanted the first layer to have a bit of a color variation, but then I thought there's gonna be a lot of white on this card. So I actually went back and I stenciled this a little bit darker afterwards. Then I went and I lined up the second layer, which is a detail layer for the leaves. And for this, I used Altenew Sapphire ink, which is the darker blue. And since it is the detail portion, I made sure I got that ink in there really nice and well so it created like a nice dark blue to contrast the blue underneath. Now the third stencil is just the berries and for that I'll be using Altenew Heartbeat ink. This is a nice true red. It's got a bit of a deepness to it so that's why I chose it because normally a deep red goes with a deep blue especially for a winter themed card so I thought this would just look well, look good and go with the blue. So the next step is to cut this circle frame out and I not only cut the frame out but I also cut out maybe about six or seven others just from plain white cardstock and this is because I'm going to build up this die and create kind of like a chipboard type uh, product in the end so that it creates a bit of sturdiness when I attach it to my acetate. Now I'm going to use the Simon Says Stamp Ultra Fine Steel Navy Embossing Powder. It is really nice because it's a nice blue color which mas matches the colors that I used for the stenciling. And it also has a nice metallic sheen to it which I find is sometimes hard to find and this is just a nice blue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and heat emboss that sentiment. And once I'm done heat embossing it, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out with the coordinating die. And just like I did with the circle frame, I'm gonna cut that uh, sentiment out from plain white cardstock another six or seven times as well. So six of them are gonna match up with the one that I have. Um, the actual image on and that's going to create a nice thick chipboard and then the extra one is just going to be to cover up some of the glue on the back of the acetate after it's been attached. You don't have to use so many layers. I mean you can use three or four. Use what works for you. I just use this many because I wanted it to be nice and thick and be sturdy on my card. Now I'm going to go ahead and use this Tim Holtz Metallic Jewels Craft Stock in this beautiful metallic blue and this just matched nicely with the colors that I'm using. So I'm going to use this along with the Spellbinders uh, November Large Die of the Month because it has all of these nice poinsettias, pine branches and little holly leaves that I can use to just add a bit of interest to the front of the card. So some people ask me, why is it that I don't really do much die cutting on screen? First of all, it's kind of boring. Second of all, I have the 
Sizzix Big Shot Plus. So I can't really fit that in the field of view of my camera. And it's just actually a hassle to move it back and forth as well. So when I do die cutting for small items, I use my Sizzix Sidekick like here because it's just easier to do. Now I cut all of these little elements out. I use that blue metallic cardstock by Tim Holtz. And then I also use Sizzix Opulent uh, silver cardstock. So this is their silver pack. There's a whole bunch of different types of cardstock in here. One of them is the glitter silver and this one is a white with like a silver sheen to it. Now moving on to the card base, I'm just using some plain white cardstock and I'm cutting it in half lengthwise. So I cut it at four and a quarter inches. Then I'm going to turn it sideways because this is going to be an A4 sized card sorry, an A2 size card, and then I'm going to score it along five and a half inches. Once that's done, I'll make my nice fold with my bone folder, or in my case, my scoring tool. And then I have to make the second fold on the front to create the easel. So I'm just going to turn my card over and stick it back in my machine here. This is um, my cutter. You guys probably have a nice scoring board, which I don't. <laughs> And because this is top folding, I'm going to score it halfway down five and a half inches, which is two and three quarter inches. So there you can see I get that um, easel card or card base. Now the next step is to get some acetate. I have this Duralar acetate. It's a pretty thick acetate. It's not one of the flimsier types. I would recommend using a thicker acetate for this. And if you don't have a thicker acetate, you just make sure that you build up your circle frame much thicker so that it kind of holds the acetate up when it's in the easel position. So I cut this out to the front of the A2 size card. So four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to decorate my card inside and I'm using the Altenew Holiday Wishes stamp set. I'll be using my mask technique to kind of max, mask off the... Um, the font, the fancy font, and I'll stamp the main sentiment in Versifying Claire Black Ink, and then I will mask off the printed part and stamp out the fancy font in um, some Persian blue Altenew ink, which matches the blue on the front of the card. So I love doing this because this creates like a two colored sentiment, which matches with your color scheme of your card. And once that is done, I'll go ahead and start assembling the front of the card. And to do this, the first step is to adhere all of those layers together. And once they're put together, they're going to give you a nice dirty piece of cardstock, which is like a nice thick chipboard. Now I just use my Barely Arts glue because that was there on the table and the easiest thing for me to do. But once I had all the layers together, this was six layers in total, including the, um, the image on the front. That gave me just a really nice thick uh, frame here. And this is going to hold my acetate up nicely when this card is folded in the easel way. I'll repeat the same process with the sentiment and build that up and create a nice thick dimensional sentiment. So it's not only creating the sturdiness for the card, but it's also creating dimension and just making your card kind of stand out a bit more. Now to attach these pieces to the acetate, I prefer to use a strong tape like Scorpel tape because it is a strong double-sided adhesive, liquid glue you might have to fiddle with, and it might end up smudging up your acetate if you don't get it in the right spots. And I feel like other types of glues are just not strong enough and are not going to stay on my acetate because it's a slick surface. It's very easy for your items that you glue on to kind of fall off sometimes. So I just... I 100% just believe in the Scorpel tape on smoother surfaces like this. So I didn't do any measuring. I just kind of eyeballed it and stuck that sentiment where I wanted, right in the middle of that circle. I had a little bit of a glue mark there from before, which I covered up, which was nice. <laughs> and now I'm going to attach this to the front of the easel card. And keep in mind that you're only going to be attaching or adhering the bottom half of that card because you need the top to detach and stand up when you push this into that easel position. So just to double up that dimension, I actually used some 3M foam tape to attach this to that bottom half of the easel. And I'm just going to line that right up with the bottom edge and the two sides of the card and then just stick that on there nice and good. So this next step is not really necessary, but I just like to keep 
my cards clean, especially when I'm using acetate. So I have two extra die cut pieces that I'm now adding adhesive to and attaching it to the other side of that acetate. Because you know, when you adhere things to acetate, you can see all the glue and all the adhesive on the back through that acetate. No one's really going to look here, so you don't really have to do it, but I just did it in case. And you can see for the circle frame, I actually had to cut it in half because we're not actually attaching the entire thing. So once that's all done, now I can go ahead and decorate that front of the easel card. But before I continue, I do have to assemble my little poinsettias. So I'm just using two layers, like what comes with the Spellbinder set. And I'm using this beautiful cardstock, which shines silver. It's really hard to see in the camera, but in real life, it looks really nice. Now I'm going to assemble these on the front of the card and just for the poinsettias I added some foam squares to attach them and that was just because I'm going to be tucking those little hollies and the branches in behind the poinsettias and it just gives me a bit of room an extra bit of play so I don't have to kind of cut them right up to the petal of the flower. So what I did with those pine branches is I just kind of attached them together in a bit of an offset manner so you can see both of the colors. And then I cut off a bit of the end because it is a bit long and then glued it right behind those poinsettias. And this is the exact same thing that I'm doing with the holly leaves, but because they're not as long, I don't really have to cut the ends off. Now, I don't know about you, but this is actually my favorite part of making cards is once I've cut everything out, assembling it and seeing the final product is really just the most fun for me. So here I'm just putting together my little bit on the inside of the card. Now you have to have something like this on the inside that kind of sticks up because that's what your easel is going to rest against so that it stands upright. So you could put whatever you wanted here. I just chose to continue that design with the poinsettia on the inside. And that's what the inside looks like in the end. And to finish this off, of course, we have to add a, add a bit of bling. Now I'm using my go-to for bling, which is these nail art gems. I'm using the AB color gems and the red gems, which are going to be put in the center of those poinsettias, which is just going to tie that red in from the berries in that uh, circle frame. And here you have the final result, which I think just turned out better than I had imagined it in my head. Have you guys ever done that? You make a card and in your head, you have an idea. Once you've done it, you're like, oh my God, this actually turned out really nice. I think I'm going to make some more of these in different colors. You know, on the flip side, you always have those cards where you have a great idea. And then when you do it, you're like, oh no, what happened? <laughs> I guess that's just the design process, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed my video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and like my video, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified of future videos. And again, I want to say thank you for everyone who's been supporting me. I do appreciate it so, 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 so much. On top of that, you guys only have a few more days left until Christmas. So I hope that you guys are having fun finishing up your card making and getting all your presents wrapped. And I hope that you guys have a great weekend. Don't forget to check out my blogs, all the pro my blog, all the products are linked there. And I hope to see you guys again soon. I hope you have the greatest holidays ever. And I hope to see you again next time.